I've never known a love so steady Even gold won't turn your tide Flow together like an ocean. Hey everyone, this is Brian and Michelle with the Cruise Travelers, and we're starting a new segment here on the Cruise Travelers. Um, since we are pretty much landlocked at this point, no cruises until the foreseeable future, we're starting to do a um, reviews on campgrounds. We're traveling all over the United States, and uh, we are here today at Boyd's Campground in Key West, Florida, as you can see with our RV, travel trailer. Yep, so we pulled down about 2,200 miles from um, Colorado, and we are now in Key West. We're on day number four, and um, we're gonna go over the top five reasons, as controversial as it is going to be, top five reasons you should not, that's right, not camp here at Boyd's Campground in Key West. Stick with us guys, we're gonna be right back. What's going on everyone? This is Brian and Michelle from the Cruise Travelers and we're coming at you live from downtown New York City, Times Square, right? No? No, where? Hibber. Okay, maybe not. But we've been traveling and we're gonna bring a new segment right here on the Cruise Travelers for all of you to take a look at. That's when you jump in. Okay, I thought you were gonna pause it. You don't have to stop it. Okay, It'll go ahead. Okay. That's right, everybody. Um, this summer has been pretty challenging for us. We had some great plans this summer to go yep. on some cruises. Um, had family gatherings that we had planned out, but a lot of that changed for us and many families around the country, as you know. So people have started to get super creative to figure out ways that they can still enjoy traveling, still enjoy family time, still enjoy vacations, but in a safe way. And one of the things that a lot of people are doing is getting out on the road, going on road trips, and getting in their RVs. And that's exactly what we did this summer. Um, we've had... <laughs> Don't mind us, we're not filming. <laughs> He's senile, he has no idea what's going on. He has no <laughs> idea, he's just wondering. Silver alert, he's lost I think, no idea. Anyway, so you know most of our videos of focus on cruising and carnival and ships and ports all over the world that we get to travel to. Um, but we're super excited about some of the adventures that we've gone on so far this summer and that we're gonna be continuing to go on and we're bringing you guys along with us to share with you some of the great RV parks that we've had yep. a chance to enjoy. There are plenty out there that we haven't tried yet, obviously, and we're super excited to share those with you when we get there. Um, but today's segment in this larger series that we're going to be doing with you all is a little different. And like Brian said, mm -hmm. you have choices to make when you're traveling around the country and going to different parks and making your reservations with your family. So we want to bring you some critical information that might be helpful for you um, when deciding which parks to stay at. And we stayed at one that we were super excited about. We had yes. read a ton of reviews. We did a bunch of research. But when we got there, we were a, a bit disappointed. And it may work for you, but we're gonna share some of what we experienced and you can decide on your own whether you wanna stay there or not. That's exactly right, Michelle, because um, we really looked forward. This was the place that we really wanted to go. So we picked a destination and we picked it in Key West, Florida. Yeah. So we said, that's where we're gonna end up. Where should we stay in our travel trailer? We have a 24 foot travel trailer that we pulled behind our truck and uh, we decided to pull all the way down to Key West and we said, you know what, we're, we're gonna stay. We're gonna stay at Boyd's Campground. We've heard so many great things about it. We've watched other YouTube videos about it. We've uh, watched some blogs, we've read some blogs, and we, we heard some amazing things. When we got there, well, we weren't exactly happy. And this segment right now, this video is gonna go over the top five reasons you should not, and I repeat, should not, stay at Boyd's Campground. Let's go guys. All right everybody, we're gonna get started on our top five countdown of reasons not to stay at Boyd's Campground. Yes. But before we jump into all of that, we really wanna start with a little disclaimer. We make this review with a really heavy heart. Yes. Um, 
we'll share a little bit about the positive experience we had with the owner of the park who treated us super kindly, wonderful human being. He was very understanding, yeah. he was. And super supportive, wanted to you know, meet our needs and he wanted us to be happy. He so, even came to our campsite as well. He did. He, he, may, he, he decided to come to our campsite because we wanted to talk to him. We talked to him the day before and he showed up at our campsite at like nine in the morning and um, we thought that was great. I mean, that really showed the customer support Absolutely. here at Boyd's Campground. He was super receptive. He wanted to hear what some of our thoughts were. And he knows that, you know, you can't hit everybody's top list. So, you know, these things that we're sharing with you, not everybody's gonna feel the same way about yeah. it, but for us, these things stood out and we wanna impart them to you. Absolutely. But they're a family-owned establishment. We support local-owned, family-owned establishments. Uh, we think that that's really important to the local community. Um, but, you know, again, it's a business, so if there are certain things you're looking for, perhaps some of this information will be helpful to you. We hope so. That's what this is about. Yeah. It's an informational video that we're bringing to you so you better understand when you travel. We traveled nearly 2,300 miles, pulled our camper down. Amazing time, amazing trip, but it was our destination. It was the place we wanted to go. And that's why we really felt it was important to bring this video to you guys. So without further ado, we'll move into number five. And number five for us was location. Absolutely, the location. Yeah. We planned our entire vacation, as Brian said, with this one destination in mind. We said, we're going to travel across the country, but we want to go to Key West, Florida. Yep. We want to be down there by the water. We want to be in the close to the Caribbean, the southernmost tip of the United States. And that was our destination. So when we chose Boyd's Campground, we were really thoughtful about where we had picked to stay. Exactly right. We looked at several videos on YouTube and it looked amazing. And some of the YouTube videos, uh, some others that put it together did a great job, but um, it was a little different when we arrived. So thinking about location, you have choices to make when you're picking an RV park or any other destination. And what you want ideally is a combination of the park itself and the amenities that it has to offer, what its immediate location is, as well as outlier areas, things that are local attractions, things that you want to get to easily. That's how we felt about Key West. So we were super excited about the park and then about getting to Key West proper down Duval Street where everybody wants to go exactly. from the park. That was what we found was incredibly, incredibly challenging. Um, Brian and I don't drink and drive ever. So we're always open to exploring the different options for transportation. Yep. Mm -hmm. Uber is one of our number one choices. That was really just difficult because it's $20 per way to get to Key West proper, downtown Key West, and then to get back to the park. That's That's $40 a day. I mean, I don't, I understand when you're going down there and you're going to have a good time, but you have to be cognizant about the transportation. Like she said, we don't drink and drive and we use Uber probably six to 10 times a, um, a month. And it costs $20 each way. And um, it was important to understand that. Yeah. Um, and part of the reason the price was so high is because the park is actually located pretty far away from Key West. It, 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 uh, it bills itself as the southernmost um, RV park, Key West RV park, but in fact, it's actually located in... Stock Island, which is four to six miles off of Key West. So it can be a bit deceptive. They say Key West, but it's really Stock Island and it takes uh, 15 to 20 minutes depending on traffic. There were some bridges that had construction that um, caused it to run a little over. Um, so it took us 15 to 18 minutes just to get from the campground to downtown. Which is a really big deal because in addition to doing Ubers, we're also super open to going on walks places if it's close enough. We take our bikes everywhere we go, so we'll often ride our bikes a couple of miles into town. Um, the, the path from the park to uh, Key West proper, like Brian said, construction going on. It's really not a bike friendly area necessarily. It's, it's really, really far. Um, you might be an avid bicyclist, but it isn't really set up in such a way to be a really pleasant bike ride. And after you've spent a day downtown and maybe you've had a few drinks like some of us might be, you know, tending to do Margaritas. in Key West, um, 
I can't imagine taking that ride back on a bicycle. Four no. or five miles, that Especially would be... Especially after dark as, yeah. as well. We thought about yeah. that. And uh, I like to reach out to some other Facebook groups and YouTube groups and ask them, what do you think about riding bikes back and forth? And most of them, if not nine out of 10, said um, probably not a good idea. Construction, bridges, nighttime, not a good idea. So that's really our, our view on uh, the issue with the location. And with that, we transition to reason number four. Reason number four, which I was really disappointed. I was looking forward to coming down, doing some fishing, doing some swimming, sitting on the beach at Boyd's Campground. When you take a look at those videos and take a look at the pictures that they have out on the internet, some of the other YouTubers, and um, also Boyd's Campground leaving that information out for you to review it. Uh, they stayed on there, but they have a nice beach area. Um, so I was really disappointed. So number four, like we said, is the beach area. There is no beach area. Yeah, that was pretty disappointing for me. Brian did such a wonderful job supporting me. I really wanted to have some beach time on this vacation. And we planned a lot of our stops to be right on the water. And we were not surprised, we were not disappointed, I should say, um, with a lot of the places that we got to yes. stay. But when we chose Boyd's, one of the reasons was because they had this beach area highlighted. So I thought, okay. Brian's gonna do some fishing. I'll get to enjoy some beach time, swimming together. Yes. No, absolutely not. It was not even an option. No mm -hmm. swimming, like he said. The beach area was non-existent, not to mention other things about the water area. And I really feel like, you know, there's a lot you cannot control about the water. You have your tides coming in, coming out, but the issue here was, we really feel like it could have been manicured better by the, uh, by the campground. Uh, we really struggled with that. So uh, number four, like I said, is the beach area or the lack thereof. I think one area that we do want to touch on that was a positive that, that I noticed was they actually have a boating area for you to dock your boat. So you can come in, you can camp, you can dock your boat. They have a nice boat ramp, um, really open water. You can get right out to the bridges. So that's really a great thing. If you want to come camping, bring a boat, put the boat in the water, take it in and out. This is a great campground for you to do that. But if you're looking to sit on the beach, looking to fish from shore, this is not your campground. All right, guys, so that was number four uh, with the lack there of the beaches. We're gonna move right now into number three. Coming at you at number three is... The snow. It's yeah. Yes, and that has a lot to do with number four. Yeah, and we alluded to that in our video about, in our video, our session about um, the beach area or lack thereof, the water area and the sludginess, general sludginess that's all over the coastal areas of the park. It smells pretty bad. And again, we've stayed at many parks, many of which are on the water, and we did not experience this anywhere yes. else. So whether that was just an unfortunate timing of the seasons and the water, I'm not sure, or whether it's a result of the lack of cleanup at the park, um, it was sort of a constant presence. You get out of your camper, it smells. You're walking exactly. around, it smells. It really makes it, in conjunction with the sludginess and all of the debris that it's all over the place. It's just not really pleasant to be outside standing by the water. And now we move to reason number two, which is... The permanent resident feel. We realize that there are several um, campgrounds throughout the U.S. that they have some permanent residents here and there. But we noticed walking through the entire campground that there was an abundance of permanent residents and it really didn't feel like to me or, my, or Michelle that we were at a campground. We felt like we were at a permanent residence park and uh, we want to feel as if we are there with others who are on vacation. They're barbecuing, they're fishing, they're having fun, they're playing outside. But we found that several of these sites were filled with permanent residents. And we understand that some of those permanent residents are indeed the employees of the park. And I think that's a great benefit, especially for how expensive it is to live in Key West. We, we commend them for doing that. Where we sort of had a hurdle to jump was the fact that some of the locations um, were not well manicured, not really taken care of. And you could tell when passing by that they were permanent residents. And we really struggled with that. Yeah, there were a few places where 
You could tell that it was uh, had more of a lived-in feel, um, and the, the nature of the permanent residence, you could notice that things were sort of piled up a bit, yes. the storage of things outside, whether it was chairs or tires or uh, tools or equipment of various kinds, where it's very clear that this site is not, you know, sort of people who are vacationing, moving in and out, and that's fine. Um, but, as Brian said, when you're on vacation and you're kind of excited and you're meeting other people, that's part of the adventure is to meet people who are also on a journey and they're telling you their exactly. stories. Um, and you're meeting people from other states and you're making friends and exchanging stories about, hey, try this park, that park. That's cut down a little bit when part of the population at the park is not on vacation. They actually live there and uh, uh, it just has more of a lived-in feel throughout the park. Exactly, exactly right, and that's well put. It does feel like it's a lived-in feel, and uh, we want the experience to be able to be on vacation with others, and we really didn't get that feeling from here at Boyd's Campground in Key West, Florida. So, like I said, number two is the lived-in feel, permanent residence here at Boyd Campground. But now we're gonna move into the number one reason right here on the Cruise Travelers channel. This is a segment that we went all over the Southeast and picked a few key campsites, campgrounds that we stayed at that we're reviewing for you. And right here on the channel, we're reviewing Boyd's Campground in Key West, Florida. And don't forget, before we jump into number one, we really want you to uh, be a part of the family, be a part of the Cruise Travelers. Go ahead and click that subscribe button right here. Um, click the like button. If you have any questions, there's comments down below. We realize that this is a really controversial um, review we're giving Boyd's Campground because everyone loves Boyd's Campground so we would be glad to chat with you down in the comments um, and ha better understand your feeling about Boyd's Campground. So here we go guys we're gonna count down we have the top five reasons to not camp here at Boyd's Campground in Key West Florida. Number five is location 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 Yes. And number four is gonna be, there was no beach. Hardly any anywhere to fish as well. You could try to fish, but um, as you see when you get there, it's just not a great place to fish. And uh, there was really a non-existent beach. And number three is? The smell. Ugh. Ugh. Yikes. Yes, the smell was not good, which also came from uh, the beach that you couldn't swim in. Oh, well, that was a good idea. Don't swim in it. It smells. <laughs> and okay, and now we're counting down to number two. The number two reason to not camp here at Boyd's Campground is? The lived-in feel. The lived-in feel. We love that the, the residents, uh, that some of the residents, they work there. They're very nice people. Um, but it feels like there were several sites that were being lived in permanently, and we just struggled with that. And the number one reason here on the cruise travelers to not camp here at Boyd's Campground is? The cost. The cost. It all comes down to the cost. You know, if, if this was a campground that was 30 to $45, which was the average other than one um, campground that we stayed at in Fort Myers, we're gonna bring that to you. Amazing campground. Um, but we average between $35 and $45 per night with the same amenities. Um, and we really struggled with this. So that's why we struggled with a lot of the other, uh, the t other top four that we had is because of the cost. Yeah, the cost was a challenge for us. Um, like we've been sharing all along, you have choices when you're deciding which parks you're gonna stay at. Cause Boyd's is not the only campground in this general area of Key West. There are other places that you can choose to go to. So when you're making choices as you travel throughout the country, cost is gonna be a factor and the amenities and experience that comes along with staying in that park. Yes. This was the most expensive park that we came across. Yes. Understandably, it's four miles from Key West, but based on what you're experiencing when you're there, the challenges to getting into Key West, 
um, and the experience within the park itself, we felt that it was a bit overpriced, especially having traveled throughout the country and having paid much less for a far better experience. So it's something to really think about um, if you want to spend that kind of money. Like Brian said, if you're looking for a place to dock yeah. your boat and be able to camp and get out on the water immediately, it's ideal. that might be the best place for you and the price may be just right. Yes. For us, we found that it was pretty exorbitantly expensive by comparison to other parks and based on these challenges that we had um, that we've outlined in reasons one through four. Exactly, and we can't exactly give you numbers because it really depends on whether you're coming in the winter season where it's a little more expensive, or you're coming during the summer, or you're or you're pulling down with a class A, or you're pulling down with a travel trailer. It really depends on um, what you're expecting and how you're getting there and, and how you're staying. But as for us, we have, like I said, a 24 foot travel trailer. We pull behind our truck and um, we paid over $2,200 for us to stay here at Boyd's Campground. There is a discount for staying 30 days, uh, which we did receive that discount, but um, it's really expensive to stay here. Um, and if we were closer to Duval, to where we could bike, walk, or reasonable transportation, then we would balance those things out with the cost. But then we had the beach and the lived-in feel and the smell, um, so we really struggled with those things. So balancing out all of those top four things with the cost of it, that's really why we say the number one reason is the cost. And let me add that we did stay in parks where we really just enjoyed the park. Um, Key West was a great bonus to have when we planned yes. out our trip, but if we had paid the same price for a campground that was on the beach um, and all of the amenities at the park were fully inclusive yes. and we could just enjoy our experience there, that would have been worth it to us, putting aside any local areas or attractions. But we just didn't feel that the park itself offered enough that yes. the area immediately around the town where the park was located or the access to the local attractions really justified um, the price that we were paying the premium price yes. that we paid for this park exactly right so the number one reason to not camp here at boyd's campground in key west florida is the cost now i do have to give a shout out to one of the owners that heard our cries. We walked in the following day um, after arriving and said, look, these are some of our concerns. The owner, the son's, uh, the owner's son, uh, then came to our campsite nine o'clock the next morning, immediately addressed our issues. He was very compassionate. He was understanding. He said, I understand what you're saying. We just want your stay to be perfect. And that in itself is amazing customer service. Absolutely. So, if you want great customer service and a warm welcome feeling, you could really go nowhere else and get better um, customer service. We said, look, we're considering just not staying and moving on. Uh, we left after four days. We were supposed to be there a month. We left after four days. And he says, absolutely, you can have all your money back. And not only that, fill it out for a couple days. Stay a couple days. And if you decide to not stay, then we'll give you your money back for the remainder of the days that you don't, do not stay. That is customer service. And you don't see that much nowadays no it was wonderful he was compassionate he was understanding you know he deals with vacationers and travelers every day and he knows that mm -hmm. you can't hit everybody's you know check marks i um, mean he was totally supportive of our concerns he had a nice conversation with us um, he wasn't hostile or angry or anything. He just said, I want you guys to be happy when you leave here and have a positive memory. Exactly. Um, and, you know, that's the best that you can do when sometimes, you know, all of those things don't match up for you. But you guys, you know, some of you may love it. Some of you may not. Um, but he handled it really well. And we just want to give a shout out to the family that owns Absolutely. the park. Absolutely. So the, the park itself is well manicured. There are some great things about the park. But um, we want you to understand, if you're pulling down 2,200 miles, 2,500 miles, all the way down to Key West, we want you to understand uh, what you're in for. Um, but we're not saying don't try the park out. We want you to experience the park. 
maybe you'll have a better experience than us. We didn't have a terrible time, but um, we, we're not saying you shouldn't try it. We just want you to be aware of what you're in for when you get there. Try it out, pull your boat down, put it on the boat dock, hook your power, electric sewer, and water up, have a great time, but be aware. The top five reasons to not camp here at Boyd's Campground in Key West. Thanks so much everyone. Once again, this is Brian and Michelle. We're giving you the top five reasons to not camp here at Boyd's Campground in Key West, Florida. Like I said before, click that subscribe button down below. Click the like button. Take a look at a couple of these videos here that we have for you. We're gonna have more reviews for you. Our next video coming out is going to be with our friends Tia and Andy. We're gonna do a collaboration with Tia and Andy. I don't know if you've, um, you've looked at their YouTube channel. They have an amazing YouTube channel. We're gonna give you a link down in the description of their YouTube channel. We're gonna do a collaboration on traveling during COVID. You're gonna be amazed because um, we actually had an amazing time traveling during COVID. Traveling doesn't have to stop. You just have to be creative, exactly. be adventurous, and you know maintain social distancing and healthy practices while you're on the road. Exactly right, and that's what you have to do. You have to respect the virus and respect other people, and we had an amazing time. So look for that collaboration with Tia and Andy. There are a couple amazing travel, uh, travel vloggers. I want you to take a look at their YouTube down here in the description below. Thanks so much, and once again, this is Brian. This is Michelle. We are the Cruise Travelers, and we're gonna see you on the high seas or out on the highway. Bye, See you guys, everybody. bye.